Well, good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Are you doing well? Anybody enjoying Paco's playing this morning? You know, last night I came in and saw Paco. We haven't been here, I think, for a number of years. And there he was, just bringing the anointing. I reckon we should have a meeting this morning where he just plays through the whole message. What do you reckon? It's just like... If you've never met us before, it's great to have Marie, my wife, and uh, we have been great friends of Pastor Bayless and Pastor Janet for many years. I love this church, love the people in this church. And maybe you are visiting this morning. Maybe you're here and you're kind of going, God, I need something. Well, I, I got good news. God's got something for all of us. And we're not here just to have a meeting, but we're here, I want you to hear this, to engage in a moment very easy when you do things long enough just to get into the routine of it without even knowing. Worship is not a song. Worship is an exchange where a human heart embraces an infinite God. And we, and you know, I just, again, I, I love just every morning going, God, what, what, what are you wanting to say today? And one of the things I felt like is God wants to meet us and He wants to meet us with supernatural things. And uh, before we even pray, uh, preach this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray. If, you, if you're facing something that seems naturally impossible, well, God loves to walk into weakness with strength, and He, he loves to walk into darkness with light, and He loves to walk into despondency with love. And I'd love you to lift your hand if you say, that's me today. I'm facing something, and I need a miracle. Father, you see our hands, and they represent hearts. Even for those of us online today, we need miracles. And we just pray, God, that you'd reach into every situation, begin to turn it around. Cause us to have a hope that's bigger than the situation that is centered in the God of all glory. And today, we just thank you for who you are. We pray for those that we're standing next to, that your blessing will be all over them, that there'll be something in your word today that will reach all of us deeply. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, turn around, give someone a high five on your way back to your seat. Thanks, Paco. Love you, mate. You're awesome. Are you excited to be in church? Well, I was talking to Pastor Bayless, and I said, what, what are you doing this month, or what's the theme of the church? He said, basically, we've just said, from the pastor's heart. And uh, what are some of the things? So I did share a message last night, which I'm going to share again tonight. But this morning, I want to teach a different message. And, you know, you know there's, there's a lot of things that happen in life. One of them is you grow older. How do you know when you're getting old, when people come to you all the time and say, can you tell me what you've learned? Come on, you can tell when you're getting old when your belt is above your belly button. Or the candles cost more than the cake. Or oh, here's another one. Marie said, I shouldn't tell it, so that means I'm going to. You can tell when you're getting old, when your body feels like an old car. When you cough, the radiator leaks and the exhaust pipe backfires. I already apologize, but I had to tell it. It's, we're going to have strain in our marriage for a little while now, so you'll have to pray for us. But many times people come and they say, so Pastor Paul, what have you learned? I, I want to teach you something that has taken a lifetime of learning. And it's to do with this thought that significance requires depth. Well, somebody got it on the front row. <laughs> you know, I think we're in an age where people want width, but don't want depth. It's kind of like we want everything to happen now. We want it fast. We want it to be explosive. So much emphasis is on success, but not significance. And yet the Bible teaches us that if we learned to do it God's way, if we went deeper before we went wider, we would unlock significance in who we are and what we do, and we would profoundly experience God in a different way. In fact, Jesus was teaching the disciples. You'll know it in John 15. And he says, you realize I'm the vine. The deeper you are in me, the deeper I am in you, the more fruit 
your life will begin to bear. I, I'm a real believer that we need the laying on of hands. I'm a believer in the altar call, but one thing I've discovered is altar calls don't fix you. They prepare you to bring the changes that are necessary to be brought. If you want to build a marriage, I'll pray for your marriage, but it's not the answer for your marriage. You're going to have to grow depth of marriage before you experience the wonder of the significance of marriage. Years ago, this became one of my favorite verses, Psalm 92 and verse 13. The Bible says, those who are Planted, not planted, planted. Everybody say planted. Everyone that is planted has a root system. In the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. It doesn't say those that turn up to church. All right, I'm going to go there this morning. I'm going there. It doesn't say those that just turn up when it suits those that create a root system, those that go deep are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the purposes, the promises of God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will be fresh and they will flourish. Come on, turn to the person next to you and just check them out if they're fresh. If they're flourishing, if they're still awake, it's kind of like, are you still on the planet? It's kind of, there's so much debate even within the church. It's like, well, you don't have to be in church to be a Christian. I've heard that many times over the years, and I said, no, salvation is a free gift, but you cannot fulfill the purpose of your Christianity unless you do it God's way. And so God is beginning to cause us to realize that if you want to be a short-term Christian, an anemic Christian, a Christian that bears little fruit, even though you may be in church, but you're not planted. So the enemy attacks root systems. And I want to suggest today that the depth of your root determines the quality of your fruit. So in other words, you go, I need a situation change. You're going to have to learn to grow deeper roots. You're going to have to learn to go, I've got to go hard and long and strong because the depth of my root determines the quality of my fruit. I've been in ministry, full-time ministry for nearly 40 years. And to be honest, some Christians I meet seem to never change. It's kind of like you shake their hand, say, how you doing? And they go, not bad under the circumstances, to which I say, what are you doing under there? <laughs> now, we all have valleys. We all have dark seasons. We all have real issues we've got to walk through, but we've got to realize that environments determine destinies. And we've got to begin to say, well, God, I've got to change where I find myself planted in the depth of my root so that I can see you come and bring me into focus to live a different kind of life. So today I've brought a friend with me to church. If you know anything about this friend, you'll know that this is a bonsai tree. Everybody say bonsai. And if you wanted a title for the message, it would be this. Don't become a bonsai. And you might say, well, I got bonsais, or I've, I know people with bonsai. Bonsai is a Japanese art form where they have discovered that they can produce a miniature replica of the real thing by being able to crown its root system and crown its top and literally cause this tree to stay a certain size, and yet it will mimic the wonder of its original purpose. All right, we're going to go there today. So I want you to think about your life and go, am I really the kind of Christian that God wants me to do? Am I experiencing increasing fruit? Am I seeing the promises of God become enlarged in my life? Or do I find myself going around in circles? 
And when I look back over 10 years, I still feel like I'm the same size. So let me explain it today. I would say that bonsai Christians, number one, are bonsais because they want to control the shape of their pot. It's like, well, I, I love God, but you know what? I, I love a certain colored pot and a certain shape pot. So I'm committed because I like this pot and I want to be able to control my life. We've got trust issues. We've been through certain hurts and we haven't processed those hurts. So we are not planted in soil. We're located in a pot. We can pick the pot up and we can go wherever we want to go with the pot. We make a decision about our lives according to what we can control. Uh Uh-oh. Rather than God saying, no, you need to embrace a life where I control it. Not you control it. Come on, somebody say amen. We go to that church because it's convenient. We like the feel in that church. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not a good enough reason because one day the feel won't be exactly the same. You know, I, I need another married or a marriage partner because I've lost the feeling for it. No, possibly you're looking at your marriage from a pot perspective and you're experiencing a bonsai marriage rather than a marriage that God wants you to experience the way that he designed it and see a bonsai Christian, they control the shape of their pot. Why? Because they want to and have to be the center of the equation. Mm. It's getting quiet in here. (laughs) Second thing about a bonsai Christian is that a bonsai Christian requires constant maintenance. So when you go and buy your bonsai at the bonsai shop, the owner of the shop will say, now, this is a different kind of tree. Every week, you're going to have to soak it in a tub because there's not enough soil to maintain moisture. So you soak it in the tub, and it can't store the wood for very long. So not only will you have to soak it every week, you'll have to buy one of these, and every day, you are going to have to spray your bonsai. All right, let me go there like a lot of Christians. You know, I need Paco to create some worship. Oh, I'm feeling good about life right now. I need somebody to inspire me about my giving. Because if you bring it, I'll bring it. No, the trouble with the church is we need inspiration because we don't have revelation. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, you got to make me feel good. And if I feel good, if somebody doesn't greet me at the door. You know, I went to Cottonwood and they're not that friendly. No, the Bible says if you're not finding friends, it's because you're not friendly. Oh, aren't you thankful I'm not your pastor? If you're online today, I'm talking to you as well. Come on, it's kind of like, oh, it's better here rather than there. And so we need to just keep making sure everybody's happy. Everybody's looked after. No, depth determines height. You see, we want to control the shape of our pot. We want to have other people maintain our lives. Bonsai Christians, thirdly, live shallow, therefore restricted. This whole thought of root depth. You see, what they've done is as this root system begins to grow like it normally would in the wild, it has to go spiral And if I were to pull this out, this tree is about four years old. But its roots have become matted within the same environment. It's cute, but it's not God designed. And our roots, if we don't live in a big enough environment, in a deep enough system, it's going to restrict what we can do. And people that are bonsai are going, well, who are you to judge me? Because actually bonsai trees, the leaves on many of them are the same size as the trees in the wild. And so we go, well, our leaf is just like anybody else's leaf, but they don't realize how small they are. 
And God's saying, I want to break through. I want you to have a life where your marriage is going to constantly get better. I want your family to get stronger and healthier. I want your finances to break through. I want your walk with me to develop. So you're not just going around in circles and experiencing root binding because every Sunday you need to come. No, you begin to realize that I'm not created, even though it's cute, I'm not created for this. Well, who are you to judge me? Well, I got friends that are just like me. Yeah, well, every bonsai shop. Where do you get your bonsais from? Bonsai City. It's like, well, I got other people. Yeah, that's what we tend to do is get people just like us rather than people who will love us enough to challenge us and say, you got to get out of your pot. Come on, the color is not that important. It's cute. It's not about you being able to control where you go and don't go. It's about God's way. And when you begin to study this, this is what is so challenging, even though the leaves are the same size. God created every seed to be in an ecosystem. And you study an ecosystem according to God's design, you'll discover that there are two types of producing fruit. There is what they call a monosystem or a monoculture and a polyculture. Monoculture is where we have put all the same kind of plants together so that we can accelerate the growth and the fruitfulness of that, but we need insecticides to be sprayed on them because there is more disease because there's same next to same. God designed it that same should not be next to same, but we need difference next to difference. And even when there are weeds around us, we don't need to be sprayed because God designed the whole thing to ward off disease. So why do we come to the church? Because we just want the same kind of people around us. No, we need people that are going to rub us up the wrong way because they love us not just to do it for that sake, but Even in China, they found if they had the same type of rice seed next to each other, they could increase their fruitfulness by putting different types of seed. And they could do that. In fact, they got, I think it was, 91% increase of outcome because there was something like 85% less disease. And you might go, where am I going with this? I'm just going, you need people around you that are different. You need people that are going to tell you. No, I'm telling you. You said tell them. (laughs) It's like young people often say, preach it. That'll preach. I go, no, that'll live. It's kind of like God wants you to realize that the enemy doesn't want you to get in a deep-rooted system because you're going to break through and... The enemy's plan right at the beginning was what? To get man out of the garden. And today is exactly the same. So we have a modern Christianity that we go, well, I'm not getting a breakthrough and I I don't seem to see the promises come my way and I I keep needing to get fizzed up. And God says, it's all to do with root systems. You see, this is a four-year-old juniper tree. Let me show you a picture of one that's out in the wild. That's the same tree. And even in that situation, that tree is planted on rock. So it's limited to its size capacity, even though it's out in the wild. If that was to be planted in soil and allowed to grow deep roots, it would grow up to something like 70 to 80 feet in height. And I just wonder today, I'm not here to preach a message, I'm here to share something that for me has become a revelation. I don't want to become a bonsai. I want to get into the right kind of environment so that the God potential in me can continue to grow. That there would be increase in who I am and what God designed me for. So my plea today is don't become a bonsai. Bonsai attitudes is, no, I just don't get what I want. That's a bonsai attitude. It's not about getting what you want. It's about giving what you can. It's not about needing the spray every Sunday, even though we enjoy the corporate gathering together. My answer is deeper, not wider. And so therefore, if you turn that around, you go, so if we're not going to be a bonsai Christian, what are we going to be? We're going to be planted Christians. God's design is that I live a 
planted life. And so what does a planted Christian look like? It's a Christian that grows deep roots. My answer is deeper. I'm going to go deeper. Honey, we've had some challenges in our marriage and we're going to stop blaming each other. We're just going to grow marriage roots. We're not getting the breakthrough financially, so we're going to find a new root system and discover biblically what we need to do to get a breakthrough that a tree's design is to grow deep, provide for others, and reproduce itself. My life is to grow deep, provide for others, and reproduce myself. And then you begin to look at a forest. Is somebody getting something out of this? And then you look at the forest and you begin to say, how does it work? The roots go down. And so they go down and there are trees and there are shrubs. And it's an amazing thing because this forest designed by God has large root systems so that when the storms come, you don't keep getting blown over because you've got larger trees around you. And your roots are not just surface roots. They are deep roots. And so you become entangled with other trees. And so when the storms come your way, you're not flipping out, not in church. You've got people around you, and it's not all easy. You go, yeah, but I, I try to get kind of planted, but people hurt me. Well, you're going to hurt people. I'm amazed how many Christians come to our church and say, oh, pastor, that was amazing today. We're going to make this our church home. I say, how long have you been here? Two weeks. I said, there's only going to be a number of weeks, and you're going to find out we're just like anyone else. Because if you're going to grow deep roots, listen, there are clay pipes underneath. There's old bits of concrete. There's rubbish from things that have gone on. And you thought this was the perfect church. But, you know, this is what this little tender plant does. The root hits the clay pipe. And, you know, it goes into one of the open cells that we can't even see. And it goes through and it breaks the clay pipe because the DNA of a healthy tree says we've got to go deep no matter what we hit. We can lift the paths and the roads that stand in the way. And some of you have given up because you got a little close to some people and got a little hurt. And God says, don't let that stop you. We will all get hurt if we've got a hurtable heart. But we can learn. And if we will grow deep, get a deep root system, then we are going to have something that in our storm, we don't stand alone. We don't isolate ourselves. I've been in the same church, more or less, same DNA for 60 years. And when the storms blow, it's not like I'm isolated. I've got Christian pastor friends over the world and they're so isolated. They live in a pot kind of mentality, just their environment. And you go, it's too hard on your own. You've got to interweave your root system. And in society, there's rootlessness. And so we've got to realize that it's not, the answer is not just to get up and go. Some churches, it's like, well, I've been in the church, but I'm moving on. I've had enough. Where are you going? Oh, well, we're just going to another church. But you, you only came here two years ago. Did you realize a fruit tree, if you pick it up and reposition it, because it's a fruit tree, in one year, it will lose 80 to 85% of its root system. For it to survive, you've got to cut it back between one and two thirds. And it will take three years to produce the size fruit it had before it left. So the devil says, if it's not going well, get up and move. Because if I can keep you moving every three years, you're not going to grow deep roots. And the depth of your root determines the quality of your fruit. And so I want to today put it on record that I think we've got to grow deeper li lives in every part of who we are. A planted Christian grows deep roots. Secondly, a planted Christian adds value to the orchard. Mm -hmm. What did you get out of church this morning? Not much. What did you bring to it? Let's check out this guy from New Zealand, see if he can teach. And it's like, didn't do much for me. That's okay, bonsai. <laughs> you might not love me, but I'm going to help you. Is the church here for you or are you here for the church? 
or both and. The church is here. You're broken today. You don't know God. Maybe you've had some catastrophes. It's a hospital. You don't need to bring anything. Just bring yourself. We love you. You don't have to perform. You don't have to be somebody you're not. Just be real with you. But there will come a time because we believe in you that we'll come alongside your bed and say, we're downsizing the morphine. Because the answer to a better tomorrow is you taking responsibility for yourself. And then your true answer is one day you are here to bring the answer you received to someone else. And it's like, if you get bored with church, it's just showing that you're not here to bring value to the orchard. You're here to bring a spirit of, exp- well, the worship didn't really take off. I didn't get much out of that. Well, can't you realize the mic wasn't working when we started? Yeah, well, I didn't like that. What was going on? Couldn't you see the worship leader sweating profoundly? It's like, what the heck's going on? Smiling on the inside. Go, oh, God, let the rapture come right now because it's not working this morning. And we're going, let's see what happens next. Some of us are going, no, let's sing louder. We want the orchard to be a little bit more ignited. Come on, stop looking at your marriage and say, look what I got. No, look what they got. Come on, you've got to grow deep roots. There's no easy answer. Grow deep roots. Secondly, add value to the orchard. Yeah, I love citrus trees, uh, citrus fruit. Anybody love citrus fruit? In a place that we had many years ago, there was a mandarin tree, big mandarin tree, and it came over to our property. And there was an elderly lady that lived next door that owned the mandarin tree, but I believe in the law of possession. So because the fruit was on our side of the fence, I just go for my prayer walk. Look over the fence. I couldn't see the lady next door. And yes, the fruit was on our side. And I'd say, well, God, you made the fruit anyway. So I would take the fruit and peel the mandarin and I'd eat the mandarin and I'd enjoy it. And it just happened for a long time. And one day I went down there and Looked over, she wasn't anywhere. I took some more mandarin, began to eat it. And I heard this voice, oh, Paul. I went bright red. I was caught. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. She says, it's okay, honey. I've seen you do it so often. (laughs) What's the point of them dropping to the ground? You know, just enjoy the fruit. The point I wanted to make is this. I never once stopped and said to the mandarin tree, Oh, Mandarin tree, you are flipping awesome. Because when you didn't feel like it, you kept putting your roots deeper. Every year, you allowed the required pruning and you've produced more. And nobody ever says thank you to you, but you were created to bring value for others. Come on, this is a big thought, this. Well, I'm not getting anything out of my marriage. I'm not getting anything out of this. I'm not getting, no, 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 no. You were here to bring fruit to it. Yeah, but I helped in the church once. And I'm not doing it again because the church used me. So I love my pot. I'm far more secure and in control here. Hey, remember the time we were teenagers We had an altar call and we were crying as the presence of God hit us and we said, God, use me. How the flip did you think he was going to use you? The church used me. I'm not saying that the church shouldn't be thankful. But come on, you're a fruit tree. People are going to take fruit from you all the time without saying thank you. Don't let the enemy get you out of the garden because you misunderstood that you come alive when your roots go down deep and your fruits begin to expand and other people begin to take them. The depth of your fruit or your root rather is, is what de- determines the quality of your fruit. And I look at that and I go, well, that's huge. Third part about really growing deep roots is that you've got to allow the required pruning. In fact, I better get Paco back up here because it's going to get even quieter. Come on, Parker, come and help me. You can't produce unless you're pruned on a consistent level. 
I don't care how big a life you have, who's pruning you? Well, I self-prune. I doubt that. Because if you prune a tree and you look close enough, it begins to cry. Sap comes out of the wound. Many of us are saying, God, would you take me to another level? I want greater significance. And God says, I'll first have to take you back. Because you can't have the fruit you're asking for with the size of branch you currently are. As I prune you, you're going to grow back stronger. We had a vine in the house we rented. And it was a grape bearing vine. I love fruit. And said to Marie, this must be the house for us to rent because it's got a big grape vine. The season came for the grapes to come, but there was only two clusters of grapes that were very small and were very sour. We were going on holiday. I said to a friend of mine that works in that field, would you come and look at the vine, see if you can fix it up for us? He said, no problem, came. We got back from our holiday and I said to Marie, look what he's done to the vine. There's nothing but the stub. I ring him up. I say, what have you done? He said, that vine was in such disrepair. The only answer for its future was to be cut completely back. Two years time, that vine had regrown luscious, sweet fruit. See, I'm here to go, I, I want to share what's on my heart. I don't want to share something that tickles your head. I, I want you to realize that God, for some of us, is saying, you've got to let me, through others, tell you like it is. Stop just kind of fitting God in when you're in crisis. Get a root system down. See, when your root system gets down with others that really love you, this is what happens. When the moisture stops falling from heaven and there is not the food you need to survive, because you're connected by your roots, there's a thing called root touch that people don't understand. Root touch means that one tree can pass to another tree what is needed. So the bigger the forest the more protected and more supply there is. Oh, I just like a little church. It's possibly because you're still a potted Christian. You like what you like rather than what you can bring. And I'm believing that God's going to shift it and we need people in our lives. That's why we need to go through next steps, growth track, so that we can start to allow people that really love us tell us like it is, hey, come on, get rid of that attitude. You're always being judgmental. You're always thinking you got it better than someone else. Just break that down and you're going to begin to allow God to take you to a new level. And so that's where God begins to lift us to a place where things really change. And every time we're pruned, new buds are stimulated to grow. There's a new horizon. There's a greater tomorrow. There's nobody in this place that is... Outside, if you're online today, you're not in a place where God has forgotten you. But God is saying there are some things that need to come off. Yeah, but I don't want to lose that because there's so many good memories with that. No, no, no. It's old branches. Let it go and let God take you to where He wants to take you. Deeper roots, greater fruits. And in that place is where we discover that planted Christians live a little different. Because there are people that understand significance requires depth. And so I'm here and I would pray for anyone that asks me to pray for them. But I realize the older call is not what we've made it out to be. It's a meeting point that prepares us for the changes we need to make. God enables us, gives us a grace to go, okay, we are going to go home. Instead of flirting with an idea that this marriage isn't going to work, we're going to say we're going to grow marriage roots. Hello? Well, we're believing God to bless the business, but it's all uphill. Stop thinking about it uphill, just go deeper. Devil, we're not giving up on it. God gave us this idea and we're gonna keep at it because we can't have width without depth. Even in the church today, a lot of young ministers, it's like, let's just expand, expand, expand. It looks good for a while, but when the pressure comes, if you don't have depth, the foundation cracks. 
We've been in New Zealand now for 28 years and we're seeing incredible exponential growth. Not because we're good enough. We're just prepared to do whatever we need to do. And we just keep going deeper. God wants you to go deeper. God wants you to be in an environment where people are going to bring to you what you need in crisis, but tell you what you need to hear in pruning. We don't want to just turn up and end up as a bonsai. We want to be people that are led by God. You see, I I look at this. This is incredibly challenging. The same seed. that birthed this bonsai is the seed that created the tree on the hill. The problem's not the seed. The problem's your environment. And I reckon if this bonsai could talk, and I'm sorry if you've got a pet bonsai. I think if the bonsai could talk, it says, I might be cute, but I'm sick of being small. Come on, somebody in the house today. Go, God, I love you, but I'm sick of my life. Going round and round in circles. And I'm going to say, no, I'm going to put root systems into everything that I do. I reckon if this bonsai could talk, it would say, please, would someone put me back in the garden? And ultimately, that bonsai could speak, I think it would say, please, Cottonwood, please, everyone online, don't you dare end up like me. Be somebody that says, God, I'm going to go deeper to grow richer, to have the wonder of your promise be all over me. And this morning I get the greatest privilege any human could get. And that's to help people that have lived for self kind of acknowledge it and say, I'm going to get out of my pot. Pot of my own control, pot of my own weaknesses. I want to pray for everyone online. I want to pray for everyone in the auditorium here at the 845 service. And you go, you know what, Paul, I've got a belief in God, but I know there are things in my life there is sin sin separates me from God God's love never stops reaching out to us condemnation makes us feel like we've missed it whereas I go no you've got a God that helps us to reset restart our lives today maybe you need to press that reset button and say I'm just going to acknowledge God I'm sorry for my sin and I'm not going to allow what I've been and how I've lived to contain me I'm going to put my life in your hands again And I'm going to say, God, would you forgive me? Maybe you've never prayed what we call the sinner's prayers. Every human is a sinner. Christianity is not a religion. It's about a relationship with a God that died for us and said, you were created not to live in your circumstances, in your failure and in your sin. You were created to live in the garden. And the enemy wants to keep you out of the garden. But when you find the garden, you find you don't have to do it on your own. You just got to keep going deeper and you're going to, have people that get around you. And there are many people in the service today that God's got you here, not to hear a guest speaker or to be here on a Sunday morning service. You're here because God wants you to know you can begin again. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, would you do that today? Not for me, for you. Because you can't find completeness. You can't find an answer to what it's all about until you find the God that created it all. And there's nothing more precious than being a healthy fruit tree and seeing others sustained because of what you went through. And it doesn't always happen like that. And maybe it's a time where God's saying, I need to prune that sin of your life. It's time for you to give it to me. You need to offer it and I'll take it from you. But I'm going to ask right now, every head to be bowed. Come on, let's just honor this moment. And if you're here today and you're online or you're in the service and you go, Paul, I've never given my life to Christ. Personally made that decision or Paul, I have, but I know I'm not right with God. I'm coming home today. I want to pray the most precious prayer for you, and that's to get your life right with God. I'm going to ask you to do one thing, and we're not going to manipulate you, make you do what you're not ready. We're here to help you with your decision. But you say, Paul, that's me. Would you include me in that prayer today? I 
need to get right with Christ, lift your hand up nice and high, all over the place. Come on, lift them up. Dozens and dozens. Lift them up, lift them up. This is about you saying, God, I'm coming back to the center of my life for you. And today I'm lifting my hand to say, I need you to forgive me. I need you to meet me. I'm coming back to what I was created to be in relationship with you. Keep your hand up, unashamed. With your hand up, we're going to pray this out loud as a church family. If you've got your hand up, you join us as well and just say, God, today, thank you, you loved me enough to die for me. And today I'm sorry for my sin. And I choose you to be my Lord and Savior. From this moment, I'm a new creation. My past is forgiven. And I begin again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we put our hands together and congratulate every single person? Seriously, you made that decision. Doesn't matter how you feel, everything shifts. You're in the garden of God. As you grow deep, you're going to grow up and you're going to grow out. It's one of those messages this morning. It's a bit of an ouch message. Because it doesn't matter where you're at, you still need to be pruned. In fact, I think the closer you get to God, the more I realize, man, I have to keep on that edge of going, God, just do whatever you need to do with me. Let people around me be able to build me. But my challenge to you is every time you see a bonsai, you say you might be cute, but you're not who God designed you to be. Come on, God's designed you to be in a forest where you'll find supply and security. Tonight, I want to share a message that I did last night. One of the other big things in my heart is that I'd been in church my whole life and never found financial freedom. I'd always honored God with His tenth before I was five. Never once to my recollection have I ever not done that, but I never found financial freedom. And I'm talking about a pathway. How do we find financial freedom? There are four ingredients. In fact, I've written a book. It's my latest book called God, Money, and Me. It's my whole journey of being taught the law of sowing, but not the law of reaping. And how do we break through financially? If you've got financial challenge, I encourage you, have a look. You can get it on Amazon. It's out in the foyer. But this will literally challenge you about practical ways you can create a pathway to have a root system that brings financial freedom. Where debt doesn't rule you, you're in a place where you've got a God's full and complete answer. Amen. I'm going to be teaching on that tonight. So if you want to come out tonight and get another punch or another uppercut, then come out tonight. Come on, let's thank God for who He is. Pastor Bayless, we love you. So good. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with Paul a few moments ago and opened your heart and said yes to a relationship with Jesus, I just want to tell you, we're here to do all we can to help you. We've got a gift. <clears throat> We'd like to give you a brand new Bible if you don't have one. As you go out the doors uh, through the foyer, directly in the plaza, we have a prayer tent out there. There's some of our leaders are already out there. They'd love to greet you, <clears throat> find out your name, hear your story, uh, give you a Bible. Uh, if you have need of prayer for any other thing, they are happy to pray with you. They are ready to pray with you. They've actually been praying to get ready to pray for you. So they're out there. If you're new to the church as well, we have a guest lounge out there. We'd love to treat you to a cup of coffee, cup of tea, find out your story, uh, just make you feel welcome. And then you'll also see little, like, contact points out there. Um, what are they called, babe? The connection. Thank you. Connection spots out there. And you need to get involved in Growth Track. It's a great thing. The whole church is going through it. We've made it really easy for people to do. go out and, and get some information about it, find out about it. How many enjoyed the message today? Yeah, it was great. Really good. Really good. Once you stand to your feet, I want to pray for you. We'll be on our way. Father, thank you for the privilege to gather together. We realize that we have brothers and sisters throughout the world that 
have to meet together in secret, that don't have the liberties that we have. Help us to never take them for granted. Lord, help us to be those that come to give, not just to get. Thank you for intersecting us in our journey and helping us to grow, helping us to be better, helping us to be bigger in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people as they go today. May there be great fellowship. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.